Derek Glunston. Hey, it's Nikki Llewellyn and you're on Gut Plus Science. This podcast is on a mission to increase engagement at work. And on this show, we equip CEOs and people first leaders of all levels to make impact. Let's get to it. Hey, Gut Plus Science listeners, I have Derek Lunston with me today to talk about building deeper level connection with those we interact with. I love topics like this and learning from people who share a strong interest in human connection. Derek is the CEO of Life Guides, a platform that builds employees to be their best through powerful human interactions. Derek believes the core of depth in relationship building is curiosity, and I love diving into this. It's powerful stuff and things we all can do right away. Let's go. Derek, welcome to Gut Plus Science. I am looking forward to talking through the ways we can connect human to human and build authentic connection more often. You know, connection has had more of a spotlight now than ever before, I think, and I love that. Obviously, COVID propelled the need for this topic, but what are other things that you think has made this a priority? Thanks, Nikki. It's great to be with you. I think what you described with COVID and the pandemic broadly is a key driver of this topic, but more specifically, the unique experiences that are underlying that. So for example, the fact that we've moved out of the office into remote work as a consistent basis, that's one. The fact that we're constantly reminded of different points of view and the tribalism right now in media. That's, I think, another key element. I think the fact that people are sitting in physical isolation in many regards because of what's happened over the last few years is a big part. And just our core gathering places of where people would get together and build community, churches, even restaurants, sports, all those different ways have been deprioritized over the last few years. And so that compound effect of removing an environment or changing the environment for people to connect is a huge factor. And then just the realization of how people's lives are different and the lack of day-to-day support and real human interaction, personalized experiences is I think a key element of it. And so it requires us to be very intentional, aware, open and willing to try new approaches to connect and also find ways to rebuild as we kind of reemerge here what has worked in the past, but do it differently and do it better. So those are a few thoughts that come to mind. Yeah, that's great. And I just jotted down a few notes that I want to dive into that you helped me just spur that I'm constantly hearing challenges that I think we'll address today. So Derek, we're about to break down how to get a deeper level of connection, especially leading that. Tell us why this is such an important topic for you. Well, one, I do lead a business that's focused around specifically human connection and the sharing of wisdom and empathy, which is life guides. And we'll talk a little about that as well. But I think at a core level, I am a lover of people. I love to see what motivates people, what moves people, what inspires people, and what makes people different. And I celebrate that in my relationships and in my life. And I've always been curious. I've always been an explorer. I've always been very much mindful of that. That's the richness of our human experience is what makes us different. And to learn about why people are driven or why people think the way they do or feel the way they do or why they pursue their passions the way they do is a huge driver of my own personal life and purpose. So this is not only a really important topic for you and something you're passionate about, but you do this work. This is what your business does, which we'll get into in a little bit. What do you see many leaders overlook in prioritizing building relationships, like deeper level relationships with their team members? There's a two-part answer to that question. So one, I think we've taken for granted in some ways the ease by which people could connect prior to the last two years. When we were in a physical space, the serendipity that would happen when you just run into someone or the relationships that would be built just by spending quality time with people, having the time to do that, I think made it easier. And I think at the same time, with that ease, we became hyper-focused around performance and companies focusing around performance, I think was a key factor. Now, as we've moved into a world of remote work, performance is becoming easier to measure in objective senses with the tools and capabilities that we now have and our ability to manage our time individually and as a team is getting even better with, I believe, the tools that are available. However, it requires much more effort and intention and skill, frankly, to build connections with people without having that natural environment or the ease to do it. We hear a lot about introverts and extroverts and what that looks like. I think there's an element of that there. I think there's an element of how our ability to change and adapt is playing in a part of this. 
And I think that there's a competing priority right now of people wanting to go back to the way it was and the awareness that it won't go back to the way it was. We need to bring forward what worked and infuse in new lessons and new abilities and new ideas for how we can connect in a future world. Because I think the reality is our kids and the younger generations, they have a totally different lens on all this now. And I think that we're going to be seeing that echo and ripple over the next coming decades. I've heard you speak of the power of curiosity being one of the key components to really helping leaders and just humans to connect in deeper ways. Before we go into curiosity, I want to get kind of a visual here. If we could break down what are some of the key priority areas or the key things that we want to share, one being curiosity, what are a couple others? And then let's just work on a conversation to break those down. I think understanding what's important to someone. One's values are very much top of mind right now, but I think on a deeper level than that, what's the underlying purpose? What's the underlying reason that those values are important? What's the core and what moves people? What's important to people and what changes that? How do we then create experiences that reflect that within our business and personal environments and lives? Oh, I love that. Okay. We're going to unpack that and also curiosity. We'll start with curiosity. So why is that of all things, something that you speak on being just such a powerful prioritization for leaders to go deeper in relationship building? It speaks to the beginner's mind. When you're curious, think about kids. And I have a few young children right now, but ultimately being curious means that you suspend your beliefs, you suspend your agenda, you suspend your identity, you recognize that you don't have the answers, you don't have, it's a blank slate. To be curious is to be malleable, is to be receptive, it's to be willing to take on new beliefs and to be willing to see different points of view. When someone is curious in that way, the magic can happen. And the ability to share information, to share lessons, to pass and collaborate with what's effective or what's helping people increases massively. And I think that is what curiosity is all about. And the ability to step out of a pattern or a routine or habits and to really look at them freshly and to suspend one's sense of self in that, it requires some practice. It requires some awareness and it requires some commitment ultimately to do it. And I think a core practice to being curious is that you ask questions and questions then elicit more of a listener's positioning, you know, where you're really taking interest and diving deeper into someone else's life versus the statistics say that we spend the majority of the time talking about ourselves. And so I think that that elicits that great practice of just listening and being more in the seat of allowing the other person to talk and genuinely wanting to learn about them. And that's the big part, genuinely wanting to learn. And then to your point, that's where the whole idea of questions with open-ended questions and questions you don't know the answer to and questions that you're excited to hear a response about. It changes the entire way that you listen. And listening with one's entire being, not just with your brain, but with your heart, with the physicality of that. There's a way to do that that I think requires a different level of presence. Derek, I'm curious, do you have any go-to questions that you use from an open-ended standpoint that really help you to just dig in and build deeper relationship and conversation? I don't have any go-to questions per se. I mean, I sure I have patterns around this, but I mean, I think an open-ended question is just tell me about yourself. Tell me about who are you? What matters to you? I mean, those are just simple questions that could go a lot of different ways. How are you today? What's going on in your life in this moment? Just stuff like that. And why? Why did you do it that way? And without any judgment or label around the why, but just why I want to understand. Now let's go back to this other one that you talked about with regards to leaders who really focus on asking someone else what's important to them, really understanding what moves them. Break that down for us. So I think it comes back to helping to understand what motivates people and why people choose to do what they do. So when you ask them what's important to you, this analogy has been popping recently because it's been real, but it's the deathbed analogy. What are the things that you don't want to regret in your life? What are the things that you want to be proud of? What are the things that you want to experience? What are the mistakes you'd like to avoid? When you think of it in that lens, if you were to put yourself in that point of view and reflect back on whatever time frame you want to live on, How does that inform your choices? What pops in that? Is it your career? Is it your family? Is it your spouse, your children? Is it adventure? Is it learning? Is it teaching? Depending on those questions, people are going to potentially have different life paths or different sequences that they want to do things and how they want to do it. I think that when you get to that, you find both the diversity of those elements as well as the common themes. That goes back to shared value, shared commitment. It allows leaders to both 
connect on a personal level and also create that compelling vision that brings people together and to help people build and work together more effectively. And I think that's a big part of it. As someone that works alongside human connection as an expert, I'm curious what mindset coaching you could give our listeners on investing in human connection. Like, are there typical things that come up that you have to help change the mindset so that the things that you do would even stick for the leaders? I'm glad you used that exact word to call me an expert, because I think that's a perfect example of a mindset shift. I don't see myself as an expert. I see myself as a learner. I see myself as skilled in certain areas. I see myself as practicing. I see myself having different points of view and perspectives and community that have shaped that, that I can communicate to people. But I'm still very much moldable and receptive and open to other points of view and ideas. And I think that beginner's mind, that concept of being able to hold two values, i.e. that you're growing and skilled and developing expertise, while at the same time having the humility and awareness to say, I don't have the answers. There's a lot still to learn. Things change, variables change, technology changes. All these things are happening and are happening at a faster and faster rate. No one is, you know, experts today are, are fools tomorrow. And that's the pattern of history. Like that's how innovation is born because the experts are the ones that always say what cannot be done. And the novices who bring points of view that are different and convergence, they're the ones who are creating big changes and in innovation. And I think that's the whole concept of What is it mindset? And then the other part is that, again, it's back to paradox, the ability to both be confident while being subservient in that process. And I think those are all parts of it. The paradox, and there's the book, Economy of Leadership, as one example, like the idea of where you're balancing competing points of view or what could be perceived as competing points of view, when in reality, they're part of the whole. And I think that's the key concept here. Earlier, you mentioned remote work dynamics propelling the priority of relationship building. And so I jotted that down because I wanted to come back to it. So many in our world of the people first leaders that have different topics that they're submitting, I want to learn on this. I need help with this. This is a hot one remote work dynamics of connecting with your team, how to build the relationship during onboarding when you've never sat next to each other and shook hands. What have you learned, some best practices, aside from some of the things we've talked about or reemphasize some of those, to help leaders who are struggling with building connection in a remote work environment? One, it requires the leaders to acknowledge that the game and the playing field has changed. They need to adapt their style to connect in a remote work environment. They need to spend and allocate time for specifically relationship building conversations and performance or business outcome related conversations and or separating them with affiliation in a conversation. There's a time and a place and to not necessarily rush it. I speak for myself, like I'm very much a time blocker. And the risk of that is that you're not allowing space for the human connection to happen. It requires a pause. It requires people to take a step back. I think that developing new processes and developing new systems for connecting are going to happen to create some of that. I think that now as people are going back out and traveling a bit and places of old and where people would gather are re-emerging and that's happening. Before pandemic, getting someone to meet for a coffee in the midst of their busy day was really, really challenging. Now it's challenging to get people to meet just generally in person for whatever reason. People are driven by different ways. But when you do meet, at least in my experience, in-person meetings run double or triple what they used to be. It's just natural. I can't tell you how many times a 30-minute coffee has become an hour and a half long coffee over the last few months for me because you just start talking. And when that happens, people just start sharing what's going on in their lives. And people are starving for that connection right now because we've been literally blocked from it over the last couple of years. And so it's the same thing. When you see restaurants now, because the restaurant industry was hit so hard, there's massive lines and massive waits to do all these different things. And so I just think we're at a really interesting point because we need to create new structures and new places, new environments and new social mores for how this works. And I think that people are different places on that continuum. That's the key part. Everyone's in a different place on this. And you need to kind of check in and see where is the person you're meeting with on this continuum. So those are a couple thoughts I have. So Derek, before we go into talking about life guides a little bit more, I'd just love if you have a couple of things you'd want to share, like go-to techniques or tactics that you'd like to share with our listener audience that are leaders looking for, I want to try this. I need to think differently, or I want to try this in my next one-on-one, or this would be a good group activity. Anything come to mind is like go-to techniques that you want to share. Right now, we schedule time, again, where we have Business meetings, we have social meetings in our company. That's one thing that we do. When we have space to, and the other thing I'd say is leave space to actually have conversations that may not be considered typical for the workplace. Talk about what's happening in the world. Be willing to have environments, a safe space to talk about 
what's happening politically. It's talking about people's spiritual development. It sounds kind of crazy, but people really are enjoying that. And I find that when you give people the latitude to do it, they're doing it anyway. And so that's something that I think is changing is that the lines between what's acceptable and not acceptable is changing. And if you allow and give feedback on how to do that, it can be a beautiful moment. And I think that we really need that right now with what's happening and what's happening in the world of last year. The ability to put yourself in someone else's shoes and to suspend your perspective for a moment allows insight and growth to happen. So good. And exactly why we caught on to your core being curiosity, curiosity, empathy. I love that. So thank you for honing in on that today. And I'd love to talk about the story of how Life Guides was born and what Life Guides offers today that directly impacts what we're talking about. Yeah, well, let me share what Life Guides is and then I'll share the story. So Life Guides is a technology platform that allows for people who are going through a life experience, a life event or a life challenge to receive direct empathy, support, wisdom, and resources from someone, a guide, quote unquote, who's been through that same experience or something very similar themselves and is now on the other side. They're healthy. They have a place of perspective, wisdom that they can share. And so it's very much building that reciprocal mentorship model of life experiences. And that's what Life Guides is. And we offer that to employees and their people and their families to help them through the unexpected twists and turns of life, the positive and the challenging moments of life. The way that Life Guides came about, so about seven years ago, I met Mark Donahue, who's my business partner and founder in Life Guides, as well as Will Bunker, who was one of the founders of Match.com, and a number of other entrepreneurs and interesting people at this group called Abundance 360, which is part of now Singularity University. And Mark and Will had this shared experience that they had both had parents who suffered with dementia and Alzheimer's. And overnight, they were confronted with the reality, how do you manage the care for this family member, this loved one? How do you work through the healthcare system? What's the shift on someone's identity and the time commitments that require to be a caregiver? And a whole slew of other related topics. And Mark and Will had this realization that, hey, if we're fairly well resourced and we're struggling with this, imagine what people who don't have the resources that we do are dealing with in navigating these particular challenges around dementia. And so I heard this idea and I saw the business plan that Mark subsequently wrote and I thought it was brilliant and really well-timed because of the fact that it wasn't just about Alzheimer's, although that was a topic that was very real and what's happening in the aging population. That same model translated across any life experience, life event, and life challenge, whether you became a new parent, whether you lost a loved one suddenly, whether you were managing stress due to some specific life event, whether you wanted to navigate your career growth, All of it was based on peer support, learning resources. And ultimately, back to that concept of empathy, putting yourself and connecting with someone where they are and where they need based on your understanding of that situation or your suspension of that. And that was how Life Guides started. I became one of the first investors in the idea about five years ago and then have increasingly gotten more involved over the last few years until I stepped into the CEO role in January of 2020. So I moved my family across the country from the East Coast, from the Philadelphia area to Phoenix to help build. And it's been quite a fascinating couple of years, as you can imagine, with what's happened. Wow, it's so awesome. I love the work that you're doing. And I wonder if you have something that comes to mind. I I would love to share a story that just warmed your heart about the work that you're doing, a client success story that shared, this is because of Life Guides. This is how things have been changed, or this is the impact that it's had inside of our organization. I'm sure you've had hundreds, but if you could pick one to share with us, I'd love to hear it. We've had so many, but I'll share one because this has happened fairly recently. And we don't look at it this way, but this is how it was kind of characterized. It's one of our members, quote unquote, graduated from their guide. Over a course of about a year, they had weekly sessions with their guide. And this particular member is going through a divorce. Again, for purposes, I don't know who this person is. I don't know their story. That's all confidential. But what I do know is that they had shared with their guide that over the course of this year, through their weekly sessions of talking through all the different elements in their life as a result of this life change, they were able to go on with their life and start to explore new possibilities and how they wanted to create their future. And they defined themselves as having graduated. They were super appreciative of that experience. That's one example from a member's story. And another side, we're working with organizations where we're seeing examples of all sorts of different life events experiences, and they recognize the value that the company is providing them to their families to have this service. They're recognizing that by offering a personalized companion, and we talk about this phrase, more casual than therapy, more qualified than a friend, 
someone who's just for them, who quote unquote gets it, it's a really unique offering for a company to provide. It really does show that they care and in a different type of way than what is typically offered by an organization. Well, thank you so much for joining today. And Derek, we're going to transition into our lightning round where we'll learn just a little bit more about you. And I want to talk a little bit about Rebels as well. So we're going to take a quick break, come back to our lightning round for just a couple of minutes, and we'll be right back. If you're leading with a people first mindset, which most likely you are because you're listening to Gut Plus Science, join People Forward Network, the largest community of humans on a shared mission to lead meaningful work. You can find us at peopleforwardnetwork.com or follow People Forward Network on LinkedIn. We're back on Gut Plus Science with Derek Lunston and into our lightning round where we'll get to learn a couple of key things about him and the personal side of Derek and then also spotlight Rebels with the Heart for those of you that don't know of it. So Derek, if you had to pick a favorite book of all time or favorite recent read, what would you share? So the book that I've recently read that I really enjoyed was this book called Right Away and All at Once that talks about this personal and professional values exercise. I really enjoyed that. A book that I recommend all the time in terms of that it's been a key driver is the book Abundance, which is about the role that technological innovation plays and can play in creating a healthier, more productive, flourishing humanity. And that's one I almost always recommend. And then the other one I read recently, and it was a really good book. And how about a favorite hobby when you're not working? So right now, my life is, I have three young children. So I have three kids under four. So my spare time is spent with my wife and my kids and exercising and business. I don't have a, in fact, Aaron, my wife has been challenging me to get a hobby because all I do is stay healthy to hang out with my family and work right now. Three under the age of four. That's busy. I get it. I get it. So where is your favorite vacation spot when you guys can get away? I love beaches broadly. We got married in the Virgin Islands in St. John. I love it there. Hawaii. I'm from New Jersey originally, so the Jersey Shore. We have some team in Miami, so I'd love to get there. But pretty much anywhere with a beach is the go-to spot for me. And Derek, I know we can find you on LinkedIn, and we'll drop a link to Life Guides in the show notes. Tell us about Rebels with the Heart. So Rebels with the Heart, that in some ways is a hobby passion project. So Rebels with the Heart started... We're coming up in our two-year anniversary episode, as a matter of fact, tomorrow. So we'd started Rebels with a Heart, quote-unquote, the new rules of leadership, with the intention before the pandemic started to highlight leaders and organizations that were playing by their own rules, that were infusing passion, purpose, and human-centered leadership at the core of what they do, and willing to go against the grain to show the role that conscious leadership could play in the workplace. And we launched it literally, and the same week that we launched it was when the lockdown started. And that took on a whole new role and a whole new definition of what the Rebels with the Heart show became because it became a live recorded segment where we'd bring on C-suite leaders talking about their role in life, in business, in their mindset, in their values, and how that was showing up in the context of constant uncertainty and change. And we've had some amazing conversations and interviews over the last couple of years. And from that live format, we've spun that into a podcast, into a pre-taped video recording as well, in addition to live events that we're now doing in different cities where we're bringing together leaders and communities talking about this in addition to our regular monthly live segments. So for those of you who can check it out, I highly encourage you. We have a website, rebelswithaheart.com. And it's just a way for us to connect with other like-minded people in the world of business who want to leverage business as a platform for change and for good. Well, congratulations on two years and keep it up. I think you're just getting started because it has got some momentum. So I'm really excited. We can link that out in the show notes as well. All right, guys. Well, we'll see you next time. Derek, thank you. Here's my truth you can act on from our wonderful conversation today. Number one, in building deep, authentic relationships with any other human, make sure you know what is most important to that person and stay rooted or anchored in that always. For example, in friendships, knowing that your friend needs quality time, prioritize scheduling time to be together. And in a business meeting, understanding what the other person's goals are and revisit those in conversations and take steps to help them advance that goal. Always be being true to that person and what is important to them, making sure that you know that. Number two, being curious involves a lot of question asking. Think about a few open-ended questions that allow you to get to know the other person and that question allows them to really open up and you just listen. And number three, place the intention of suspending your beliefs and seeking to see another's point of view at the forefront and practice it. 
another powerful component of being curious is suspending our beliefs and seeing someone else's viewpoint. It expands us and it grows us. We just left the world a little bit better. Now go do something with it.